This video will show you how to replace a damaged or flat tire. For this activity, you will need a car with a bad tire, a spare tire, a jack, a tire iron or tire wrench, and preferably a torque wrench and appropriately sized socket. Let's get started. Whenever working on your car or using hand tools, it's best to wear eye protection. Also, it's best if this is done by an adult or at least a person of legal driving aid. You're going to need your spare tire, your jack and jack handle, tire iron, and torque wrench. If you're not sure, consult your vehicle's manual to determine where your spare tire and jack are. Mine are in my trunk underneath the trunk liner. Spare tire is in the center of the trunk, and the jack is off to the side. You have to lift the trunk liner in order to get access to it. Also consult your manual to determine where to place your jack. It's usually just inside of the tire you're attempting to replace. There should be two divots along the frame rail that indicate where you should place that jack. Preferably, you'll be able to see these divots, but if not, you can locate them by touch. Once you've centered the jack underneath the lift point, you can begin to raise it into position. I'm doing this manually without the jack handle because there's not much resistance on the jack at this point. Once the jack is touching the frame, I hook my jack handle into the jack and begin to tighten the screw that drives the jack. Remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey, right is going to lift my car. I do not lift the car fully off the ground because I need to have the wheel in contact with the ground to hold it in place while I am loosening the lug nuts. The jack that you find in your car is an emergency device. It is not designed to support your car for an extended period of time. You should always put something underneath your car to catch it in case it should fall. Here, I'm using the spare tire. Now, I'm going to use the tire iron to loosen the lug nuts. I have 21 millimeter lug nuts, so I'm using the 21 millimeter side of my tire iron. It's important to loosen and tighten your lug nuts in a star pattern to avoid placing too much strain on any one lug or lug nut at a time. Even though I'm not starting at the top here, I am following the star pattern, loosening it, moving over to the next point of the star, loosening it, moving over to the next point of the star, loosening it, moving over to the next point of the star, and some of these are tighter than others. It can take a great deal of force to loosen some of these lug nuts. Now that we've loosened the lug nuts with the tire iron, it's not important that that tire be touching the ground. So now we lift the car the rest of the way up so the tire is no longer in contact with the ground. At this point, we can loosen all of those lug nuts by hand and pull them off. It's less important that you do this in a star pattern, and so I'm just kind of going through the lug nuts and pulling them off as they come off. While I'm removing these, know that there's a flat side and a rounded side to the lug nuts. The rounded shape helps center the lug in its hole on the wheel. If you have opened back lug nuts like these, be sure to reinstall the lug nuts with the rounded side facing the wheel. With the tire off the ground and the lug nuts free, you'll be able to pull the wheel right off. You can freely move the tire off the wheel and then roll it out of the way. We're going to replace the spare tire underneath the car with the damaged tire. That way, the, if the jack fails, it has something to fall on. And now we're going to try to find where the lug holes in the wheel line up with the lugs. It's going to take a little bit of doing, and you'll see I'm going to have to actually lift the car up some more because this spare tire is a little bit bigger around than the damaged tire. But once you get one lug lined up, you can just sort of rotate the tire around it and then push it all the way on. Then you can add the lug nuts back on before you tighten it with the tire iron. I did have to lower the vehicle slightly so that the tire was in contact with the ground. This is a very good demonstration. This is not the final tightening of the uh, lug nuts, but you'll notice I am getting them screwed on there in a star pattern, starting from the top to the bottom left. 
over to the right. And I'm gonna come back over to the left in a second. And then back down to the bottom right. At this point, I'm going to screw this one on, and then I'm going to apply pressure to it to tighten it. And from here, I'm going to repeat the star pattern. I'm going to skip over two lug nuts. There you go. Tighten that one down. Skip to the next point of the star. Tighten that one down. Skip to the next point of the star. Tighten that one down. And then do the last lug nut. Do not drive on your spare tire any longer than you have to. Many vehicles have undersized spares designed to get you to a service station or tire shop. Even if you have a full-size spare like mine, driving on it can affect the wear on the other tires as well as vehicle handling. If possible, you should have your repaired tire put back on your car by a professional. If you have to put the wheel back on yourself, you will need to make sure that you properly tighten the lug nuts on the wheel using a torque wrench. This ensures that your lug nuts are on tightly enough to hold the wheel securely without over-tightening them, potentially damaging the wheel or the lugs. This is a cheap torque wrench that was purchased from a discount tool store. Notice it's set to 80 foot-pounds, as specified by my car's manual. I'm going to mount it to the first nut, and then turn it until I hear a loud click. Once again, I'm going to tighten all the nuts in a star pattern. Post to social media using hashtag ILoveHPL to share your complete projects with us. Follow us on social media. We're on Instagram at Houston Public Library, on Twitter at Houston Library, and on Facebook at Houston Library. Bye!